Hi folks, hope you're doing well. Hope you've had a good day. It is Tuesday today. Yes, Tuesday the 12th of January 2021. 2021. It sounds like a Star Trek date, doesn't it, really? <laughs> well, for anyone old enough to remember the original Star Trek series, then yeah. It does sound like a bit of a Star Trek date because, of course, in the 1960s, 70s, when that Kirk was around, then, yeah, yeah, that would have been used as a Star Trek date because it was way into the future. Although I think, actually, it wasn't way enough into the future of Star Trek. But um, certainly was nice and futuristic. Uh, more like Quantum Leap, I think. Could have been a Quantum Leap date. But actually... Quantum Leap, wasn't that? Yeah, that wouldn't be the case either, I don't think. No. But they were from the future, but they were going backwards. Yeah. Okay. No, that doesn't make sense either. Okay. All right. So I had a walk today with, uh, well, I took Molly and Amber, because we had to play indoors beforehand. And Molly and Amber don't do much in that sort of play, really. So I thought, oh, I can take those. Met up with Stuart. And had a good walk. And we were talking as we normally do. You know, I asked him, you know, what's, what has he got on his mind this week? You know, and we discussed a few things there. Um, there was one thing that was interesting. Because it was pretty much in line with something that God had put on my mind again today earlier today since so we were a video about. Um, so that's why I thought I'd speak about both, actually. Of course, when we talk, we do, uh, basically, it's a kingdom talk between the two of us. And, yeah, we were talking about many things kingdom, really. Well, he says he he listens to this chap, and this chap was raising points, uh, making some interesting points, telling people they need to get to know God, who God is, who the Holy Spirit is, etc., etc. And when he finished speaking about that, I noticed something quite huge that was missing, and it was this thing that God had been put on my mind. I spoke about it a little bit on New Year's Eve and around that time. But God reminded me today to speak about it again. That one of the most important things that we need to do, certainly if we're going to talk about our personal Christianity, who is God to you in your life? You know, look back over the past year. What has God been doing in your life over the past year? I mean, it seems a rather moot point telling people who, who are Christians they need to get to know God and the Holy Spirit. Because really, if they've been a Christian for a length of time and they don't know God or about God and the Holy Spirit, then really there's no point trying to teach them anything because they're lost hope. Pretty much, if they've been a Christian for a number of years and they, they don't know that, the basics of Christianity, then it's a pretty sorry state of affairs, isn't it, really? So instead of going over something that most people would pretty much know, try encouraging people to look at their personal relationship with God. How has that improved over the year? Yeah. How has your relationship with the Holy Spirit improved? Who is the Holy Spirit to you? Who is God to you? Yeah, because what God was putting on my mind was New Year's is supposed to be a time when you are looking at the year that's gone and the year that's coming. So from a spiritual point of view, you know, what has God been doing in your life over the past year? Now, 
if we didn't have COVID, you could be meeting up with fellow believers and having a time of fellowship. And yeah, the first thing you look at is what has God been doing in your life over the past year? Then you look at what are your hopes for the year to come? Now, when looking at that, anyone who says, well, peace, give him a smack. If anyone says, well, peace, just give him a smack. That, that, that's not a real personal hope, is it? That's a ridiculous answer that comes from beauty parades, uh, that sort of stuff. So beauty pageants. So let's forget that sort of answer. Be real. What is it that you want to see God doing in your life? Realistically, what can your faith see? What will you be talking about this time next year? What do you hope to be talking about more as a point? That's the thing, isn't it, really? Because in the end, that's the thing. You, if you want to be talking about your relationship with God, if you want to be talking about God at all, it's got to be about your relationship with God. Because that's the real thing that matters. Because if you're asking who is God and who is the Holy Spirit, well, most Christians will come up with pretty much the same answer. If you're asking who is God to you, what has God been doing in your life over the past year, the answer should be very, very different. Depending upon who you are, who you ask, because it's going to be very personal to those people. It won't be a generic answer. So therefore, that's going to help people far much more than who is God. Because they can just pick up some generic answer. There you go. Yeah, something they've heard in church in the past will do. But of course, if the question instead is, who is God in your life? Well, that is potentially going to open up a few things, isn't it, really? That's the thing, it? yeah. We have far too many ministers who are just doing the same old, same old, same old, same old, same old, same old. That is pointless. We don't need more of that. We need stuff that's going to help people in their development, in their walk. So that's one thing we spoke about. We spoke about a few things. Um, glory we spoke about giving glory to god and what that's all about his understanding wasn't the same as mine but again that's interesting that that's interesting i mean it's a very good chance that both of our understandings are wrong oh yeah <laughs> there's a good chance had another person been there that other person's understanding would have been different to Mine and Stuart's. There have been three different understandings here. That, that's quite likely. That could have happened. Disturbingly, though, is that what I got from Stuart, which I may have got wrong, um, is something I've seen quite a few times in church. I've certainly seen it in some of the songs. Um, it's this idea that you know, God loves to be glorified because he, he just wants all the glory. And it's like, oh, if that's the case, I want nothing to do with it. Honestly, if that's the case, if, if, God, if God is some sort of egomaniac, then I've not, I'm not, not interested in it at all. I couldn't be less interested if that's the case. 
I, 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 I don't believe that is the case in any way, shape, or form. I think I like praise and worship. Praise and worship is designed for a purpose. Praise and worship isn't about the fact that God desires to be praised and worshipped. It's not about that in any way, shape, or form. It's about getting us into a frame of mind where we can meet with God, where we can receive from God, whatever God has to give. Glorifying God is exactly the same. It's glorifying God for a purpose. There is a reason for that. It's not, the reason isn't just to glorify God. There is a purpose for that. Yeah, I don't believe God really could care less particularly. Not particularly. If you're not giving, let's say there, there is a purpose to it. One of the purposes is, of course, um, if you're taking the glory for yourself, if you're saying that I'm doing this, then the Holy Spirit is going to stop guiding you because the Holy Spirit is going to say, go on in, go and do it. And when you start trying to do it on your own, you're going to fail miserably. You're going to be shown up massively. You don't want to be doing that. But that is a reality of you know, what the situation would be. So part of the reason why we give glory to God is because if God is the one who did it, then it's, it's just about saying to people, look, this isn't me. This is God. So why are you saying it's God? Why are you saying it's God? What's the purpose? If you pray for someone and that person's healed and you give the glory to God, why are you saying it's God? Because you're saying God loves you. God cares about you enough to send me here to pray for you, to take that away. You don't have to say all that. But giving the glory to God is saying all of that without saying it. And that's not about making God feel good. Yeah, making God. I mean, it's like I was thinking earlier. Yeah, I, I could go and maybe start playing football again. Um, or at least help out with a team. Yeah, because obviously it's nice if someone says, oh, you're still good. You can still play, that sort of stuff. It's like, it is it's nice when someone praises you or says something nice of course it is but I'm not, I'm not going to do it because I'm now coming up to 52 um, I've not done anywhere near the sort of training where my fitness levels would be anywhere near what they should be but I don't do fitness training I do weight training so that's completely different um, so, <laughs> but so I've just mentioned that because obviously, yeah, just imagine for a second, God sitting in heaven, yeah, with a little giddy smile on his face every time someone praises him or gives him the glory. That's not the way it happens. That's not what it's all about. I can't remember what the song is. There's a song. Oh, God, it's getting on me now. I'm going to have to find it. One second. Let's get up to here. Let's pause this a second. I can only imagine when all life do is forever, forever worship you. So there it is, that one. I can only imagine. <laughs> That's the song. I had to pause these just videos, go and find it, but then I thought I might as well play you that little bit that's a bit concerning i can only imagine that all i would do is worship you so therefore we spent all of eternity worshiping god and that's what heaven is about 
No. No, 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 no. And a million other no's. That is not what heaven is all about. Yeah, Trump would want to be worshipped. That's Trump. That's someone with an ego. You see what someone with an ego looks like? That's someone with an ego. God? No. Only someone with an ego is going to be worshipped. I mean, for all the stories that you hear of people that have experienced heaven, you know, that have died briefly and experienced heaven, one of the things that is incredibly common is that when they see the Lord, they go down on their knees basically bound before him and he lifts them up and says you don't need to do that giving your life to me was you doing that you've done it already you serving me was you doing that Generally speaking, on most of those things, times when people have been to heaven, yeah, you know, the Lord shows them around heaven a little bit, gives them an experience of heaven they can bring back. That's commonly what, what people say, is that, you know, they kneel down and the Lord lifts them up. There are purposes and reasons for us to glorify God. There are purposes and reasons for us to praise and worship God. None of those purposes or reasons is because God is egotistical. None of them. He's not an egomaniac. I'm not saying that anyone has claimed that God is an egomaniac. Certainly Stuart never did. It's not claiming that. I'm simply saying that the whole concept of God wanting us to glorify him, purely because God wants us to glorify him, is highly suggestive as an egotistical God, which is that isn't God. I don't believe that's God in any way, shape or form. No. But again, you know, part of the reasons why we don't know this stuff, why we don't understand this stuff, is because it's never been taught. It's not taught. Commonly, it's not taught, is it? In churches. Yet, yeah, what's the purpose of glorifying God? What's the purpose of praising and worshipping God? Generally speaking, not taught, is it? That's why the job of people who are called into the praise and worship team is to get those standing in front of them to worship in a way they've never thought they could ever worship. Because it's about getting those people out there in a place where they can receive God. That's why quite often with worship leaders, you won't see or worship teams. You won't see them worshipping purely while they're leading worship. Because if, if they're doing that, then they're making it about them. And that's not going to work. Because when you worship properly, you're not really in control of yourself. So... You know, we need to we need to understand we need as I say we need people that are going to challenge us to think in ways that are new and it's good having those walks with a fellow Christian because then you do you rub off each other you, you challenge each other 
you have what you believe challenged sometimes and you you have to go into a bit more depth and that helps you even if you walk away understanding that no what you believe was right you've got to look deeper into it because you challenge each other you get a bit more of what someone else understands as well because they're going to understand things differently to you in some ways they understand things are going to be right just not your way of understanding it doesn't mean they're wrong it just means that they understand it differently and but some of the things they understand are going to be correct and you can take those things and add them to your way of thinking Like, for example, we differed on you know, how to see the big picture. Um, he came up with a few analogies. One was a little fish drinking seawater, thinking that maybe it had drank all the water in the sea, only to realize that the sea is a massive ocean. Which was cool. Again, different ways of thinking, different ways of seeing things. Yeah, the picture that God showed me is that, right, there you go. You see that picture on there? You've got Riley, my smiley Riley. If I went and stood within a centimetre of that, could I make sense of that picture? No, you have to stand back. You have to be far enough back to be able to see the image. To understand what you're looking at if you are too close you will not understand what you're looking at and the problem is is that um most of us we are too close to our own situations that we cannot understand what we're seeing but it's only with god that we can take a step back we were also discussing the fact that at the moment god isn't moving god isn't doing stuff at the moment and we've had a very very dry spell in that way for a long time but that's going to end it's something that Stuart thinks it's something that I think that that's going to end quite soon it's no good saying it's going to end quite it's going to end quite soon because it needs to because it's been needing to for a long 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 <laughs> have another thousand longs time that's if it's been 10 years if it's been two years then two years of long time can be added to that because a day we we've got not doing is a long time how long it's been i don't know i don't know i mean i can remember when there was a toronto blessing so god was doing then um I know since then there have been times when God has done stuff. There will be occasions where God has moved in various areas around the world. But we're not talking about tiny little bits. We're talking about general around the world at the same time. God doing. God answering prayers. God stepping in um, for people. Yeah, you know, God being the one fighting your battles, because if we're not supposed to, then God has to do that. So God then stepping in and dealing with the people that have been a pain in the butt to you. All of these things are going to happen. But again, don't think just because I've said dealing with it doesn't mean hellfire and damnation and plagues are going to fall upon people that have been nasty to you no it could just be that god brings them to him <laughs> we don't know how god chooses to do stuff is really up to him it's not up to us to tell god how he's got to do things anyway shape or form 
It's not even up to us to tell God how we would do things if we were in his shoes. Because remember that film called Bruce Almighty? Didn't work out so well for Bruce, did it, really? And it wouldn't for us. Yeah, we've got some interesting times. But we do need the people that are that have a platform to be bringing something that's going to be building people up. Offering something that someone's already heard before, been challenged with before. Yeah, if they've been a Christian for 10 years, maybe a thousand times is on. Oh, really? I don't see the point of that, really. I mean, it's, 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 if you're looking for something to say, is it, is it biblical? Is it solid? Yeah. But that's not saying much, is it, really? You know? Again, it's lukewarm, really. I didn't even bother with the, um, the thing that I usually listen to on the month thing, um, the uh, finish station thing, didn't even bother. There's somewhere it was on, didn't bother. I could go back and watch it, can't be bothered because I know pretty much what to expect. I pretty much know what to expect. We met a lady coming towards the end of the walk who goes there and. Yeah, I was very tempted to just be honest and say, I won't be going there again for this reason. I mean, I might go there again. I don't know. Um, I can't say for a certain I won't. I certainly can say at the moment I don't feel any desire to go there, particularly. No. Not again, because, you know, if they don't seem to be that bothered, about you know, doing things God's way and letting God speak to the people, then yeah. If I go there, I'm I'm not going to be happy going there and having the usual lukewarm stuff being delivered again. So that's yeah. I don't really want to sit through that. Certainly have to drive all the way there. And sit through that. I don't fancy that in any way, shape, or form. It's bad enough having to watch it online, but at least then I can just turn it off. Yeah, so. No. Time will tell. I mean, hopefully, hopefully things turn around there. And, you know, hopefully God is able to communicate with them that um, lukewarm is not what he wants. And that lukewarm is what they've been delivering, delivering with regards to speakers, certainly. And so I didn't see the last one. That, that speaker might have been phenomenal. I don't know. Might have been. And if it's possible, yeah. I certainly can't say I know that the person was dodgy or will look warm again because I don't. Didn't watch it. No. Didn't bother watching it. Oh, there. There you go. Right. I'll leave you now. I'll speak to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.